Well, good morning. It's Scott Young from Objects Engineering, and I have Sean Sturby, our Technical Services Manager. And uh, this is another edition of the Objects Insider. So, hope you guys are doing well in this uh, COVID pandemic uh, <laughs> reality. Uh, okay, so we, we have two main topics to cover uh, this week. Uh, first is that Sophos issued a breach notification, and two, WatchGuard has a beta of a dark web scan. So take it away, Sean. Tell us about the Sophos breach. Okay, it's just very recent, and uh, it looks like it is possible that as part of the management interface for the firewall or possibly their cloud service, that there was a, you know, it's just a web server, so there was a a possibility that there was a, a way of extracting more information than was expected. And uh, it looks like some of those nasty malware or uh, hackers out there have decided to try and take advantage of that. The nice thing is that uh, Sophos noticed it. They noticed it fairly quickly. They were able to push out a fix for the breach or the reason why the information was being released and are now proactively going out and notifying all of their clients that they can verify have been impacted by it. So kudos to Sophos for taking the bull by the horns and making sure that everybody is made aware of this. So ultimately, so if you are a Sophos uh, user uh, and they have, to clarify, they uh, offer firewalls and endpoint security. So if you've been impacted, uh, expect uh, that you would have received a notification from the sounds of it. Uh, is there anything that uh, Sophos users need to do or wait to see what the instructions are with the notification they get, if they get one? wait to see what they get from Sophos, but standard best practices is to use a different account everywhere. If you can set up two-factor authentication or multi-factor authentication and you know, make sure you use some sort of a password manager so that passwords aren't short and easily guessable, but they're good, long and hard and sure. unique. And in terms of a password manager that, uh, that uh, we recommend, uh, Password Manager Pro from Manage Engine is another good one. Um, if you're looking, to manage not just yours, but uh, multiple users throughout the organization. Um, what are some other ones that you might recommend? The one I personally use is called Password Safe. I know a number of us here use that uh, internally. So that's a, a nice one in that it's, it's not designed for a corporate environment. It's one that you would use for your own personal accounts, but right. it definitely is the right price. Uh, I wouldn't trust personally any of the online only accounts because there have been breaches very similar to the Sophos one with those online services. These are the keys to the kingdom. So right. we want to make sure we got, take good care of them. Now, password safe is free if I remember correctly. Correct. Yes. So when you say the price is right, free is right, and that's a locally one. But uh, I just mentioned Password Manager Pro by Manage Engine, just because if you're a large organization and you want every, to control everybody's or keep track of everybody's passwords in one location, then that's certainly a good option. And if you want to check it out, you can go to manageengine.ca and uh, you can download a 30-day trial there. All right, so the second one that we're gonna talk about is uh, WatchGuard, which is another firewall a manufacturer has a dark web scan beta out. So what can you tell us about that? Okay, uh, it's, it's very interesting in that all of these uh, security vendors, I'm gonna call them security vendors, they might've started out as an antivirus vendor, they might've started out as a firewall vendor, but now it's all about security, security everywhere. So WatchGuard started out as a firewall vendor. They have now bought um, an antivirus engine, which is doing more of that protection. And here's the third leg of that uh, notification. If your domain or email addresses have been released by one of those summary breaches, you might not have received one. You know, in this case, uh, we just talked about Sophos breach. Well, the dark web scanner is a centralized place for you to go and put in the domains or the email addresses that you are interested in. I'd even do uh, Gmail or 
or Hotmail type email addresses, although you have to be specific, you can't do the entire uh, Gmail or Hotmail. And then it comes back with a nice summary report, emails it to you and says, you know, um, here, as of the date of this report, the most recent breach that we see information on the dark web with your accounts in it is such and such a date and here are the details. And it's very nice in that it gives you details all the way down to, you know, here is an email address that was found in this release of data or this release of data. And uh, quite often, you know, I'm looking at a sample report here and it's saying uh, this email address was in a LinkedIn breach or this one was in an Adobe breach. Okay, well, if you've got a unique password for each account, you know which password to change. Yeah, that's a good point. And uh, it's Panda software that uh, WatchGuard purchased, is that correct? Correct, yes. Now, um, one thing just to consider is that um, there's lots of vendors out there who have a antivirus software for desktop computers or endpoint solution. And uh, I guess the pros and cons are you can have one brand of firewall and then another brand of um, of endpoint security. So you could have a Fortinet or a Sophos firewall, and then you could say use F-Secure, Symantec, or Trend Micro for your endpoint. Now, one thing that it, it seems to me that uh, security vendors are doing, the Sophos, for example, is they have a firewall and, that, and they also have uh, an endpoint security and they talk to each other. So they can make sure things are, if the a computer is affected, the, the firewall then cuts it off from the network. Is that correct? Or? Correct, yeah, that's uh, endpoint protection. So exactly as you've stated it, uh, because they are taking care of the desktop controls and the firewall, they can have a heartbeat. And if the firewall says, oh, here's a, a workstation that has my endpoint uh, protection solution on it, and it's got tons of issues in the logs, or I'm seeing something that's you know, problematic, it even allows them to get more information. So uh, classically, a firewall would just see the traffic passing through and it would know, only know the source IP address or port. Now, because it's got this agent running on the desktop, when it sees that traffic, it can go and say, oh, this traffic has come not just from this computer, but from this particular program on this computer. And now it can block at either the computer or the program level. So being very, very much more fine grain control and reporting. You don't have to chase down and go, you know, here's a infected computer, let's nuke from space and start fresh. We can go, oh, here's an infected computer and it was this particular program. Nuke that program from space and start over. Right, right. so at this point, uh, the uh, WatchGuard's acquisition of Panda is new, so there is no integration as far as we know, but if you're a WatchGuard firewall user, uh, potentially down the road, they'll have some sort of integration between the two. I guess we'll have to wait and see on that yeah. one. Looking but, forward to seeing what they're gonna do. Sure, so I, again, just to pointing out that uh, when you're looking for a uh, security solution for your organization, just consider the broad scope of, can you have a firewall that talks to the endpoint security if they're a part of the same uh, family of products? So um, yeah, just a point there. Cool, okay, so today we spoke about Sophos uh, breach notification. So if you are a Sophos user um, and you just keep an eye out for that, if you got a notification, give you uh, more details on what happened and, and what you need to do next, if anything. And then of course, WatchGuard has introduced a beta of a dark web scanner that uh, might be of interest. Also, you spoke about it in a previous episode, uh, outside of WatchGuard's dark web scan, there is a service, I think it's called Have I Been Pwned? Correct, by Troy Hunt. Right, and so it's like uh, haveibeenpwned.com. We, we'll put uh, a link to it in our show notes, but uh, you can go check it out, type in your email address and it'll tell you if, uh, if it appears on the dark web. And I would imagine it's, if you want to know more, there you have to pay for it, but uh, at least it'll give you some basic information. I believe Here. Troy's site is completely free at this point. Oh. Okay, cool, we'll check, the, check that out. All right, well, those are our topics for today. A quick one, but I uh, hope you are all well out there. Thank you, Sean, again for your time. 
If you have any comments you'd like to leave or a question you'd like to ask Sean, please leave them in the comments below. And of course, please share, like, and subscribe and uh, get the word out. We'd love that if you could help us with that. Uh, thanks, everyone. Have a great week. Bye, Scott. Bye-bye.